Joel, what are you doing? I'm not Joel, I'm Fred. Okay, Fred? Yeah, so I have a question, um, and this is not Joel's question. So you know like Noah's Ark? You yeah. know, the, the, I read in the Bible like the Israelites would carry the Ark around the wilderness. How did they carry like the big boat like with just a few all guys? All right, Fred, hold on. First of all, there are two Arks. There is a big boat that Noah and his family rode in with all the animals during the flood. And then there's the Ark of the Covenant. It was a box that carried the Ten Commandments. So it wasn't like a second boat? No, but why are you even asking this question? No reason. I gotta go. <laughs> I'm so sorry, kids. Welcome to City Kids Online. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, hi, kids. If you're a visitor for the first time visiting us, we're glad you're with us. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join us, Fred. Fred? Who's that? I have no idea what you're talking about. I see. All right, anyways. You know, I think it's very interesting that we've had some hiding behind disguises today. Okay, what, why? Well, in our Bible story, there was somebody who did not want to be seen. Who, who didn't want to be seen? Well, his name was Nicodemus, and he did not want to be seen with Jesus. Who wouldn't want to be seen with Jesus? Well, you know, last week we talked about when Jesus went to his hometown, how the people rejected him, saying, how could the carpenter's son be the Messiah? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember that. They like saw Jesus and they were like, hey, this is the guy we grew up with. We know him. They couldn't see him like the Messiah. It's true. So in today's story, there's another group of people who didn't accept Jesus. They were the religious leaders and teachers. They thought they were the experts about God's law and didn't think that Jesus was qualified to teach people. Little did they know. You know, I bet maybe when Jesus was teaching, yeah. you know, that he started getting a lot of attention and maybe they weren't getting the attention. So they, maybe they were just jealous. I'm sure they were jealous, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's review our big picture question. Do oh, yeah. you remember what it is? Um, let me see, why, why are people special? That's it. How about the answer? Ooh, um, let me see here. People are special are special yes. because they're made in God's image right. as male and female to know him. That's it, God did make us special. Yeah, I have to remember that. Yes, you do, you I'm, might need to practice. I do, you know, what? Mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear about today's Bible story. I wanna see what happens with Jesus and Nicodemus. Check this out. Jesus was in Jerusalem for the Passover feast. One night, a religious man came to see Jesus. The man's name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He studied and taught God's law, and he tried very hard to obey the law. Nicodemus wanted to know more about Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one could do the miracles you do unless God were with him. Nicodemus had that right. Jesus said, I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus was confused. He thought that keeping all God's laws was how a person got into heaven. Besides, what Jesus said didn't make any sense. How can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Jesus said, a person cannot enter God's kingdom unless he is born of water and the spirit. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. When a baby is born, he gets physical life from his parents. Physical life doesn't last forever, but the spirit gives people a better kind of life, spiritual life, so they can live with God forever. Jesus said, don't be surprised I told you that you must be born again. Nicodemus still didn't understand. How is this possible? He asked. Jesus said, when you don't believe what I say about things I've seen on earth, how will you believe what I say about the things I've seen in heaven? Do you remember how Moses raised up the bronze snake in the wilderness? Everyone who looked at it was healed. Like that, the son of man will be raised up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Then, Jesus told Nicodemus about God's great plan. Jesus said, God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him 
will not perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son to declare the world guilty, but to save the world. Anyone who believes in him is found not guilty, but anyone who does not believe in him is guilty already. Nicodemus needed new life, eternal life, but he could not do anything to earn it. Eternal life is a gift that comes only from God. God showed his love in this way. He sent his one and only son to save the world. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Whoa, I could see why Nicodemus was trying to meet Jesus in the disguise of night. Well, why is that? Well, you know, he thought he was an expert in things about the Bible, but Jesus was saying all these things he didn't understand. Things like spirit and water, yeah. born again, snake on a pole. You know, the religious leaders thought that they could be saved by keeping the law. Yeah, but Jesus kind of showed them that they couldn't. Yeah. They, they couldn't do that because no one could keep the law. So does that mean the law is bad? No, it doesn't mean that the law was bad. It just means that we all sin, and so all of us would break the law. We would. So what you're saying is that we are saved by believing in Jesus, not by keeping the law. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, Jesus gave Nicodemus an example. He said, you know, way back in our history, the Israelites, there was a time when they were turning their backs on God and they started getting bitten by all these poisonous snakes. Ouch. But God actually told Moses, hey, get this pole and put a bronze snake on it. And if anybody looks at that pole, then they wouldn't die and they would be saved. And he said, Nicodemus, it's the same thing. He said, someone's gonna be raised on a pole. And if people look to that person, then they would be saved from their sin, which that was Jesus. That's right. Jesus was raised up on the cross and we can be saved from our sin by believing that he died for us and rose from the dead. Our memory verse talks about that. It does. All right, so here's our verse. This is what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. All right, city kids, stand up on your feet. Let's practice our motions. Here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. Awesome, man. I'm so glad that Jesus did that for us. In fact, me too. You know what? We get saved and we are forgiven from our sins when we believe in Jesus. In fact, yes. we can just say a quick prayer to ask Jesus to take away our sins. In fact, why don't you just, if you've never done that and you want to, just pray this prayer with me. Just say these words. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For coming. For coming. And dying on the cross. And dying on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. I believe in you. I believe in you. And that you rose again. And that you rose again. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And make me a part of your family. And make me a part of your family. Amen. Amen. Awesome. You know, if you said that prayer, that means you're part of God's family That's now. right. That's so exciting. There's a whole celebration going on in heaven for one person, anyone that accepts Jesus as their Savior. That's right. Hey, boys and girls, we wanted to do one other thing before we say goodbye today. I'm sure many of you have already heard that our pastor, Pastor Eddie, is really sick. He's in the hospital right now. His heart is not working the way that it should. And we want to pray together. And we want to invite you to pray with us, believing that God is going to heal his heart. So join us now. Lord Jesus, we pray together for Pastor Eddie. He is your child. He belongs to you and you have promised that you have given us everything we need for life to live in a godly way. And we pray that his body would be healed in the name of Jesus, that his heart would start beating the way that it should, and that he would be strong and healthy. In Jesus' name, we believe that you heal us. Just like when you died on the cross for our sins, you also died for our bodies to be healed. And we believe you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm so glad you were with us today. We look forward to seeing you again next time. That's right. Check out our website for activities oh, yeah. to do during the week. citypointchurch.com slash citykids. Love you guys. See ya. Bye-bye.